Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. On your screen, you can see three different bags, each weighing 3 kg, 8 kg, and 20 kg. Now, lifting a 3 kg bag is super easy and requires minimal energy. However, lifting an 8 kg bag may require a little bit more energy, but one can still lift it. To lift a 20 kg bag single handedly would, on the other hand, be difficult. What this is portraying here is that lifting a bag is based on two factors, your energy and the weight of the bag. Similar is the case in atoms and their relative property of electric conductivity. Electrical conductivity is defined as the ability of a material to conduct electricity. Depending on this property, elements are classified as conductors, semiconductors and insulators. These elements are analogous to the weight and their charge carrying ability is the person's energy. How? Let's find out. Conductors are highly conductive. Semiconductors conduct current when sufficient energy is given to them, while insulators do not conduct electricity at all. What do you think is the reason behind their conducting property? Before moving forward, let's get familiar with the basic knowledge about atoms. Atoms can be energized. This energy could be in the form of heat or light. It's the energy that these atoms gain from heat or light that makes them conductive in nature. Now, you would say that if every atom can be given energy, then why not give enough energy to an insulator and make it conductive? Well, that does not happen because of a concept termed as a band gap. What is the band gap? The band gap is the energy gap which the electrons need to cross in order to move from one shell to another. Let's understand this concept better. Every atom has an atomic nucleus, protons, neutrons and electrons. The nucleus holds the protons and neutrons while the electrons revolve in the various atomic shells. The atomic shell proposed by Bohr is basically an orbital in which the electrons are arranged in a particular order. The outermost shell of the atom in which the electrons are loosely held is called the valence band. This could be the M shell in case of sodium or the N shell in case of copper that is the outermost shell. The shell present just above the valence shell is called the conduction band. The conduction band holds the electrons when they are energized, thus making them conductive. The gap between the valence band and the conduction band is called the forbidden energy gap. We just learned that in order to conduct, an electron needs to move from the valence band to the conduction band. These electrons cannot exist between the two bands. For a metal like sodium, the energy required for its electrons to transfer from valence band to conduction band is small. The valence band and conduction band of conductors almost overlap each other. Hence, when they are excited, they easily travel from the valence band to the conduction band. Thus, minimum energy is required for the electrons to get excited and conduct electricity. Metal as such are highly conductive in nature and are called conductors. When we talk about semiconductors such as germanium or phosphor, the gap between the valence band and conduction band is comparatively larger and hence, when provided with sufficient energy, electrons can travel from valence band to conduction band, thus conducting electricity. In insulators, however, the band gap between them is quite a lot such that no amount of energy can make the electrons travel from the valence band to the conduction band and this is the reason why they do not conduct electricity. Ergo, answering our previous question. Thus, band gap is the reason why elements have their specific property and are classified as conductors, semiconductors and insulators. With this, we'll end our video. We'll see you in the next one. Until then, bye.